Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> As I mentioned in my opening remarks, uh, this subcommittee and the chair and I in particular recognize the important role that the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative plays in the ability to protect and preserve the Great Lakes ecosystem and the 24 million Americans who depend upon it. We have seen firsthand uh, that providing resources to restore the health of this ecosystem directly impacts the health of our economy. Since 2010, a total of 70 beneficial use impairments at 24 areas of concern in the Great Lakes state have been removed. This is seven times the number of BUIs removed in the preceding 22 years, including two BUIs in fiscal year 2018 in northeastern Ohio at the Cuyahoga and Ashtabula Rivers. It is because of the continued success stories like this why we, year after year this subcommittee has consistently on a bipartisan basis rejected proposed cuts to the GLRI from both current and previous administrations. Administrator Wheeler, could you take a moment to speak to the importance of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative in improving the quality of the Great Lakes ecosystem and the health of the citizens who live in this region? A absolutely, Congressman. You know, I've, I've made this statement at a number of public forums and nobody has corrected me so far, so I'll continue to make it until somebody corrects me. I believe I am the only EPA administrator in the history of the agency to go swimming in the Great Lakes. Um, I, I'm from Ohio, as you know. Yes. I went to school in Cleveland. Um, I, I fully, um, I, I, I love the Great Lakes and you know, I completely agree with President Trump last week when, when he um, announced that we will fully fund the Great Lakes Initiative. Um, I've visited, um, as the EPA Administrator, the, the Great Lakes area um, in Michigan, um, and we're doing some tremendous work there, um, working with the Michigan DEQ. I, I've, I've seen where the Governor of Ohio has announced a large initiative to help the Great Lakes from the Lake Erie side. When I was at the G7 Environmental Ministers meeting last September in um, Halifax, I had a bilateral with uh, Minister McKenna from Canada, and um, she and I talked about what we can do jointly to help improve the quality and the health of the Great Lakes. And she and I intend to have, um, to visit the Great Lakes together. We're looking at where we can visit both in the U.S. and in Canada on the same day to, to see some of the, the initiatives that we're doing to clean up the Great Lakes. But this is something that we take very seriously, I take very seriously, the President takes very seriously, and we're working to see how we can continue the, the progress that we've made with the Great Lakes. Well, God bless somebody who also has cherishes childhood memories of spending a two-week vacation swimming in Lake Erie in uh, the late 60s, early 70s. I'm amazed they still have any hair. And uh, we've come a long way since those days with the restoration yes. of initiatives and the efforts that we've done. But based on what you've mentioned, in light of the President's comments in Michigan last week, what is the administration's desired uh, fiscal year 2020 request for the uh, GLRI? Um, the, the actual dollar amount, I believe, is, is, is 300. Um, and it's my understanding we've been talking to OMB over the last couple of days about s submitting an additional request to, to Congress to, to cover that amount. So it's safe to say we're likely to see an addendum uh, I, from the administration noting the change and indicating where this $270 yes, million dollars will come from? We're certainly going to follow the President's direction on that, and we're, and we're working with OMB on, on the number and how we ask for that. Great. No, knowing that we have many members here in, in a tight schedule, I yield back. And thank you very much, Madam Chair. and. Uh, I wanted to ask you some more questions, Administrator Wheeler, about something new and different, that the agency and the administration have a reverse course on these drastic GLRI cuts. I'm sure you're well aware of since 2015, as a result of the uh, GLRI funded projects, EPA and its partners have worked collaboratively to prevent over 1 million pounds of phosphorus from leaving farms and entering the Great Lakes. Excessive amounts of phosphorus threaten the Great Lakes ecosystem and priority watersheds by contributing to harmful algal blooms. Harmful algal blooms contaminate surface and drinking water supplies, cause human and animal health effects, and can lead to beach closures that result in lost recreational opportunities. Given the EPA and its partners use GLR funds to prevent over 300,000 pounds of phosphorus from entering the Great Lakes each year, can you speak to the importance of robust funding in the fiscal year 2020 in order to limit phosphorus levels and bolster our ability to prevent harmful algal blooms? Yes, Congressman. In addition to the, the, the full funding of the of GLRI, which the President called for last week, um, we do a lot of other work to try to reduce the phosphorus loading into the Great Lakes and other estuaries as well, as well as, as the HAPS, the, the um, harmful alga, alga blooms. Um, I, I think I mentioned earlier today, we just released a, a, a new memo about a month and a half ago um, looking at free market initiatives with the agriculture sector to try to work more cooperatively with agriculture to reduce the nutrient um, 
um, discharges into the into the water bodies that end up in the Great Lakes or the Chesapeake Bay or the Puget Sound or the the other um, estuaries around the country. Um, we're also working on the harmful algal blooms through a number of different research efforts with our with our own EPA researchers. Um, we have some of the most talented um, research scientists in the in the country, and several of them are working on this issue. I've visited the the labs in. Um, RTP in North Carolina, as well as our Region 7 lab in Kansas City, and our Cincinnati lab, where they're all working on this issue and coming up with innovative ways of, one, to try, trying to detect where there may be problems before problems occur, um, analyzing water samples to help communities deal with, um, with the levels as far as making sure that the beaches are, are safe or the, or the lakes are safe to, to swim in. Um, you know, right now, sometimes the testing can take 24 to 48 hours. We're trying to shorten that down so that we can get real-time results out, real-time testing results out to make sure that the water bodies are safe and that people aren't in jeopardy when we have the algal blooms or, or other problems within the within the lakes and the and, and the streams where where people recreate. Um, so we're we're taking this very seriously, and it's it's a lot of effort, time, and resources in addition to the $300 million for the Great Lakes Initiative. And certainly we're not alone in this. I've been down the other glades. I was glad to see the president was down there as well last week. The problem exists there. And obviously it's exacerbated the problem with the red tides that you see there, uh, as well as the, the green algal blooms. And I understand in the Naples area, they're suffering from the green algal blooms as well. Mm -hmm. um, how important is controlling the phosphorus levels for supporting the Great Lakes fishing industry? I think I think it's very important. There's there's a lot of issues though with with the fishing industry. Invasive species, of course, is very important. We're trying to work with the, with the Canadians there as well. Um, this is you know the Great Lakes are international, and this is an international issue. Um, but it's not just the phosphorus. It's also invasive species, um, and it's and it's um, just normal pollution that we that we find in the in the lakes. Um, so we're, we're working on this from a number of different number of different levels, number of different ways to try to to try to ensure that the quality of the of the water in the Great Lakes improves. And I have a number of other questions regarding the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, but I'll submit them for the record. Uh, but I, since you brought it up before, the Healthy Schools Grant Program that you said that you have an interest in talking about, but I think you might have been cut short. That includes fifty million dollars to establish a grant program to protect children and. and and teachers from environmental hazards where they live, play, and work each day. Like any other parent, I want to ensure that our nation's children are going to school in a clean, safe, and healthy environment. As I understand it, this grant program, the EPA will work with states, tribes, and local communities to address potential gaps in school environment. Can you identify the toxics, the toxics, the pollutants, and other gaps in school environmental health that the EPA is currently not addressing? I wouldn't say this, this that we're not addressing. Is this, for example, if a school is going to um, address one of the one of the issues, such as the, the particular matter of the toxics or the or the lead in the drinking water, if they're going to be doing any kind of um, um, remodeling of the schools, we want them to take a look at all the environmental issues and problems at the same time. So it's trying to come up with a comprehensive way for schools to take a look at the em environmental issues that they might might face. Um, point them to additional funding. This, the $50 million isn't supposed to be all the funding to clean up all the issues at a school, but to help them do an assessment to determine what are the environmental problems that they face and then help them identify resources to, to correct those problems. How will EPA make sure that it doesn't duplicate efforts of other programs like lead testing in schools grant program or the radon categorical grants? We're, we're, it would try to be the bridge program to bring all of those separate programs under one umbrella so that we can provide a one-stop shop for environmental um, quality for schools around the country. And if the uh, Healthy Schools Grant Program is funded in fiscal year 2020, how do you plan to distribute the funding to the states and tribes? Well, we would work with our authorizers and, of course, our appropriators as well um, to come up with, with, the, with the authorization for the program. We, ha we would have to have the authorization in addition to the appropriations for it. Uh, thank you very much. Like I said, I will submit some records, uh, questions for the record as well, and uh, yield back what time I do not have.